Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the difference quotient. Uh, I know uh, some students have trouble with it. The algebra can be kind of messy. But more importantly, um, the difference quotient is used to develop the central idea in your first quarter cal calculus class. So it's really important that you're able to understand what it means and how to work with it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a geometric interpretation right now of what it means. And then we'll, we'll run through about three or four more examples, okay? Hopefully, hopefully that'll help. Um, if you look at the graph of y equals f of x, let's take a look at this picture here. This is the graph of y equals f of x, right, right here, this curved graph. And what I'm going to look at here, this first point, if, if this is the x-coordinate of this point, then isn't the y-coordinate f of x, right? If the x-coordinate of this point is x plus h, then what would the y-coordinate be? Well, if the function is f of x, couldn't you call that f of x plus h? Isn't this the value of y when you replace x with x plus h? So this, this, would be the, this would be the coordinates of this point. How would you talk about the slope of this line that goes through this point and this point? It would be the change in y over change in x, right? Okay. Well, in this case, the change in y would be f of x plus h minus f of x. The change in x would be x plus h minus x. So you get this. Uh, the x's cancel on the bottom, and lo and behold, you get the difference quotient. So what is the difference quotient again? The difference quotient is just the slope of the line from the point x comma f of x to the point x plus h comma f of x plus h on the graph of y equals f of x. It's the slope of this line. Okay, so let, let's look at some more examples. If I give you a linear function and you ask to compute the difference quotient, I would hope, if you, if you understand what I just said, you might be able to figure out what that difference quotient should be. Uh, because if you go over here and look at the graph of y equals 3x plus 2, and here's your point x comma f of x, here's your point x plus h comma f of x plus h, what's the slope of this line that goes through these two points? Isn't it exactly the same as the slope of the function, the slope of the linear function? It should be 3, shouldn't it? Let's see, let's see if that's what we get. So you get, um, remember, to compute the difference quotient, you plug in x plus h here, x plus h here, and then you, you subtract f of x. Don't forget to put parentheses around the f of x, so this is what you should get when, when you do that. This is f of x plus h. This is f of x over h. You have to use the distributive law carefully. You get 3x plus 3h plus 2, minus 3x minus 2, 3x's cancel, 2's cancel. You have 3h over h, which lo and behold is 3. And again, it shouldn't be too surprising, because remember, the difference quotient is just the slope of the line on the graph of f of x that goes to the point x comma f of x and x plus h, f of x plus h. Here, since, since the function's line, linear, the slope of that line is the same as the slope of the function. Huh. It doesn't always work that way. Like this one, it's more complicated here. Uh, Suppose the function is 5 over x squared, and you want to compute the difference quotient. Remember the function notation. You can find f of anything by putting that anything down here, right? So what would the difference quotient look like here for this function? Well, what would f of x plus h be? Wouldn't it be 5 over x plus h quantity squared? So that's, that's what f of x plus h becomes. f of x is, is just this, 5 over x squared, and divide by h. So we have, we have to simplify this now. You're going to have to get the common denominator, so you're going to have to multiply top and bottom of the first one by x squared, and top and bottom of the second one by x plus h quantity squared. And so um, the denominator of the numerator is x squared times x plus h quantity squared, and the numerator of the numerator becomes 5x squared minus 5 times this thing. Let's, let's do that. Let's multiply that out, and you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Um, now the bottom is h, which is h over 1. The next step, we're going to distribute the negative 5 on the top, and we're going to flip this over and multiply by 1 over h. So we, we get this. You see how, how easy it is to make a careless error here. Now, what should happen if you do these right? As we saw before, a lot of stuff should cancel. Everything that doesn't have an h in it should actually cancel. Notice the 5x squares cancel. And what you have left is this. Oh, by the way, the h is on the bottom, right? 
you, you have the negative 10x h minus 5h squared. You can actually factor an h out of the um, you can factor an h out of the top of this, and you end up with h times this quantity. The h cancels with the h on the bottom. Your final answer is going to be negative 10x minus 5h over x squared times the quantity x plus h squared. Nice, huh? All right. Well, let me see. Why don't you try one? This one isn't too bad, compared to what we just did anyway. Uh, why don't you try to find the difference quotient for this function right here. f of x equals 5 minus 2x squared. Uh, go ahead and hit the pause button. Okay, now when you start off, the key, what would f of x plus h be? It would be 5 minus 2 times the quantity x plus h squared. So did you, did you start off right? Did you get this for f of x plus h? Did you get this for f of x? Did you remember to put parentheses around f of x? And uh, that's important because otherwise you could be off by a negative sign. What happens is when you multiply the x plus h squared out and when you distribute the minus sign here, the next step is to distribute the negative 2. I'm purposely using a couple like extra steps here so you can see what's going on. What should happen if you do it right, a lot of stuff should cancel. The 5's cancel. The 2x squares cancel, and what you're left with is, is, is um, negative 4xh minus 2h squared over h on the top, which then you can factor the h out of the top, cancel with the bottom, and you're left with negative 4x minus 2h. Did you get that? Okay, let's do one more here. This one, I, I hope some of you would know what the answer is if you want to compute the difference quotient for this function. Think about it graphically. What does the graph of f of x equals 3 look like? So what should the, the slope of the line be between x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h? Well, what should the slope of that line, line be? Let's see. If you look at it geometrically first, since the function looks like this, right? f of x equals 3. When you go from x comma 3, to x plus h comma 3, isn't the y-coordinate always 3? What would the slope be? It would be 0, wouldn't it? So our answer should, should be 0. Let's see if that's what we get. So when you compute the difference quotient, again, f of 0 equals 3, f of 2 equals 3, f of 13 equals 3, f of r equals 3, f of x plus h also equals 3. So, so f of x plus h becomes 3, f of x is 3, so you get 0 on the top. 0 divided by h is 0, so there you go. The difference quotient becomes 0 for that function. Well, I hope that helps. Uh, I would suggest focusing on that. I'll definitely ask something on a quiz and test. You should be able to do that. I will right, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.